Him up there on the left. So uh, we got F Champ coming up versus Ludwig. Yeah, an interesting matchup. Uh, this, you know, Chun Li, such a powerful character in this game. Everybody talks about how strong she can be, how dangerous, how threatening. Uh, but this is definitely one of the matchups where characters can control the neutral, which she usually excels at so well, right? Uh, and so it's going to be important to for Champ to keep keep him out, prevent the air legs from being an approach option that's tough to deal with, and you know you really got to play solid as La to find the approach against Filipino Champ, who has been good against a lot of the Chun players so far on the tour. Yeah, that's 100% true. I mean, playing against a lot of these players, especially since we we've had the opportunity, we've been what well, most of the year we've been traveling and get this matchup experience. There's a lot of information out there matchup wise on both instances, but I feel like. Champ is a lot more prepared in this situation. I just feel like he's going to be able to squirm his way away a little bit more than Ludwig's going to be able to get in. Yeah, 100%. You can see now Champ, uh, one of the important parts in this matchup that people you know, struggle with as Chun-Li is the float. The mm -hmm. float from Dalsum is such an important tool. You get to hang out in a range that Chun really cannot antagonize you at, right? You can just kind of hang up there, and it's an issue. Uh, it's something that you got to expect early from. Filipino champ, just the, the V-skill float to get away, you know, trying to, yeah, there it is. Trying to have some stuff to deal with it. Like, maybe jump stomp is a uh, thing that you can use to hit it. You know, the limbs out of float and stuff, but, uh, yeah, it's tough for her to, to really harass that space. Yeah, I feel like Luda does have a chance. I feel like the pace of this match definitely benefits him a little more. Although, like I said, I could be wrong. You see champ already. Wow. Nice trip on the limb right there. Oh, punish. Yeah. Love that he had a combo. Save. Nice, Another punish. Counter hit there, crouching fears. Oh, nice Overhead block. A uh, little jab check and turns it into everything. The V trigger is active for Chun Li. Well, trying his best to open up champ right now. Like I said, this pace seems so much more beneficial for a player like Lud. Oh, Gets got the him. stun. First round goes to Ludwig. Like I said before, he does a really great job, but once he gets his pace down. It's really hard to stop his momentum. Yeah, you saw, what, 30 seconds of Champ floating around, playing, you know, defensive, looking solid. Suddenly, you know, 15 seconds of Chun rushing you down and killing you. No confirm from Lud. I like that. Champ taking the option and just getting out of there. Oh. That back fear is such an important button for, for Chun Li to crush the limbs of Dalsum. And I feel like that's one of the major things that a lot of people forget about this matchup. You can hit those limbs. Like, a lot of people just forego and say, you know what, I need to get in. Oh, double mix up off that fireball. Great block there by Ludwig. There's the activation. And throw into the corner. The X fireball to cover. Oh, wow. Nice slide to V-Trigger activation. What's going to happen? Look at the gray from Chun-Li. One more will do it. The sniper. Got to be cautious about it. Or the slide. Oh. oh. Got him. Yeah. Through the bathroom From wall. downtown. He punched her from half screen through the <laughs> bathroom. That kind of strength on those limbs. Yoga, man. Ooh, yeah, he tried to try to get in there and attack that limb afterwards. Couldn't make it happen. And you see Champ holding back and, and trying to get out of there and hit those normals. And you see Lurch just taking that chance to go in. Finds a hit on those EX legs. And here comes the pressure. Nice hit right there confirmed by Champ. Champ has so much meter now on the bottom. Media setup. Another throw. Ah, uh, Beerverse from Champ, and now he gets the back teleport off that. No anti air, but instead just goes in the escape. Oh. That float, man, yeah. Lud just trying to get in behind that fireball, but the float, you know, angle is so tough to deal with. Yeah, and you don't want to jump up there and try to punish because you can just teleport to get out of there in a lot of instances. Intercept you with buttons oh. too. Oh, caught him, but not the full confirm. Oh, wow, just barely out of range for those air legs. Another sniper, anything's going to do it right now. Saw so the, the amazing awareness from Champ to jump out at the perfect time. Now he's got space to work with. Blood's going to have to make a miracle happen. Tries to go for that sniper again. And you see he's just content with floating at that range. Slides under the air legs first game. Goes to F Champ. That spacing, he was just totally ready to have that slide queued up. You know he was just like, yep, I'm going to put myself in this position. You will air legs, I will slide, and that's the game. So that complete awareness and understanding of all the different options your opponent, you know, can and will go for, that's so important as a Dawson player. And you see Lud thinking, you could see him thinking of a way to make this go a little smoother for him. Oh, nice. It's like climbing a mountain. Like, you have to plan out your route to try to make it in through all these limbs. Mm -hmm. 
And we saw Lud do a great job of like hitting those limbs on recovery, finding those hits and drops the combo. And a good punish from Filipino champ. There you go. Float. Oh yeah, I see. He cannot. He will not let you approach oh, behind the fireball. He will just play patient. Do all that float ready with buttons. And it's just Lud cannot find a way to crack his way in. Uh, he did it, you know, in early on, and Champ has now adjusted his zoning. EX. All right, this is big. Lud, Lud can get the, the offense going here. Ah, oh, just a little overzealous. Got him. Man, the preemptive fireball. That is the worst feeling as you float gracefully yeah. into the yoga fire in the air. You are like. Man, this is gonna be a fun next round. <laughs> like, I feel like Chun-Li's having such a hard time of getting anything started now. It's like Champ made that adjustment. He's like, nope, now there's no way I'm gonna let you see how comfortable in. Champ is right. at zoning this character. He's just so, there's so few options for her to get in compared to, you know, uh, the matchup we saw him play earlier. And it's just seems so comfortable. Nice, tries to go for that cross on Champ prepared, of course, nice. And just having such a hard time of getting anything started. Champ controlling so much of the pace of this, like you said, with that little float, just making sure that you have to change every approach possible to get in versus him. There's a teleport, Got finds him. a hit on the way down, and, and a sniper. 2-0, uh, Filipino Champ, who's looking textbook in this matchup. It really looks like uh, he understands everything. He knows where to be at all times. You know, he rarely gets opened up on defense from Chun-Li. It's just so ready and uh, prepared, you know, for every little option that Chun-Li's going to have. Yeah, it just seems like, like we said before, the minute that he feels like he's out of control, he just starts floating. He starts floating. He's like, yo, throw a fireball. Come up here and try to get me. I still have options now. You're giving me back control because of the right. space that I have available. All right, Lud still searching, racking his brain, trying to figure out what needs to be done so he can have a chance to get his offense going. We saw what happens once he finds that hit. Once he finds that opportunity to take off a lot more damage, get things done, he definitely has a chance. It's just once F Champ realized that that was what he was going for, he took to the air and he did not come down unless he wanted to. Yeah, there's no reason to leave that flow position if, if Lud has not found an answer. Uh, he doesn't have a crowned button that he's been hitting him with. He doesn't have an aerial approach button. It's really just been all about Filipino Champ. Kind of uh, hanging out in that space. All right, potential last match of the set right here. F Champ up 2-0 over Ludwig. Yeah, we see so far, it's really just a wonder uh, what Lud can do to get in, right? I mean, there, there are ways he just really has to be right, and being right consistently against Dalsum can be pretty tough. Yeah, I feel like the pace is what's really uh, what's really hurting Ludwig at this point. Oh, man, oh, here's jump. a jump in. Air leg slides under him, no punish this time by Champ. See that great damage start to add up. And you know, if you're Chun-Li, you can block a lot of these Dalsum normals, build up some of that gray, get the V-Gage. Nice little escape right there, and right back at chopping down that tree, finding those openings. There's the activation. And Lud really trying to force now. And Sierra, no, just, uh, there's no button from, from Lud. You see, yeah, the flow at that height is just so tough for Chun to deal with. She and dashes just in a and lot just gets of back, flipped. like so much holding back, just to make sure he's 100% safe on the approach. You see, sets up a little minefield there. A lot of gray for Lud on the way in. Oh, and Sierra will do it. Gotta just watch. so content to get out of there. Oh yeah, sniper will do it now, and there it is, just a little jab, and that's so important, right? It covers the grounded approach and the air. That it has that down. Uh, you know, diagonal angle, and right. it's going to cover all that space. It's really tough for Ludd to navigate. Yeah, you have to respect it so much because of, like you said, the, the part of the screen that it occupies. Ludd finds it, gets the EX legs, and oh, once slide. again, Champ just slides out of there. He does not want to deal with it because he does not have to. Another slide. This time loses corner positioning because of it, but still, it's been fighting from this position pretty well. See him faking buttons so that Ludd will do that. Uh, back fears to try to contest. Slide. Takes advantage after. Slide under again. Blood has trigger activated and a little meter. Once again, runs up to that sniper. Oh, punish? Maybe no. Oh, oh Antier doesn't hit. work. Look how much damage they lost in that exchange. And right now in kill range. And if you know if Blood gets it, he's going to go right in critical. It's not over yet, though. Got to watch that. Yeah, critical arts on deck. Look at all that burning. 
Ray holding the end of the screen. Oh, man. Yeah, hiding. Yeah, he just wants him to have to eat all this gray damage if possible. Sniper, got to be a threat. Instant overhead. That's why he went low. No, that was supposed to be critical. Or I'm pretty sure from Blood to the miss. And that's a clean 3-0 for Filipino champ who looks so incredibly comfortable, right? There, there was no point in that where you, you just saw any kind of issues for champ, really, right? Looking really comfortable. And, of course, Lug goes down with a great showing here. Had a lot of tough matches. Like we said before, and we can't stress it enough, this is a really hard tournament to get through, especially to get through comfortably with your matchup knowledge. Well, you know, they'd be looking a little bit more comfortable if they were sitting in one of those lovely Vertigare chairs, Steve, which, of course, are on the main stage as well as what we are plopped into today, mm -hmm. enjoying mm -hmm. this lovely Top 16 action. Uh, you can save yourself 10% with NACPT on any of the lovely chairs available at Vertigear over at 4gamergear.com. The music kicks in. <laughs> dun, 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 dun. Well, thanks for tuning in here, guys. Thanks to Red Bull. We are at Red Bull's Battlegrounds. We are in Seattle. I am Tasty Steve here with the awesome Say Jam. Hope you guys are enjoying yourself. Lots of great matches going on here today. So... <laughs> It's so scary to be in, a, in the situation that these guys are in, playing on stage versus yeah. such great players. Uh, <laughs> you know, we have up next uh, Knuckle Dew, Flash. But uh, we're going to take a peek into the past and see the last time these two players got to play each other. Uh, we have a little clip for you guys to check out. This, yeah, this is back in Summer Jam, you can see, and Flash. Uh, you know, interesting that Knuckle Dew did choose to go with the Mika option, right? Uh, and you can see it's, it's 2 0 Knuckle Dew at this point. This is where it gets scary for Flash in this situation. And interesting that, you know, this we didn't see any Mika pick from Knuckle Dew earlier. It was the Guile, right? But look right. at this crazy, crazy comeback that Knuckle Dew has mounted the on one Flash. One pixel comeback. And again, same kind of situation, right? Where he's just down so much. That one chance. All you need as Mika to get in there. The spacing on everything, the counter hit. And there was like this crazy flub situation that happened where, uh, yep. There it is. <laughs> but Knuckle Dew gets it anyway. You know, some weird flubbery. It was supposed to be a critical art, but yeah, you know. The it flubbery, happens. huh? Flubbery. <laughs> Steve, it's common knowledge. It's a term. <laughs> I didn't just make it up. Knuckle Dew. Uh, you see him there. He's on the left side. Should be player one side. Liquid Knuckle Dew and Flash on the right. Knuckle Dew, of course, lost to Tokido. And Flash uh, in winner's side was Ricky Ortiz. Mm -hmm. So a couple of strong players sent them there. Get the last remaining kicks out of this. But yeah, um, like you saw in that last that last match, that throwback match, Knuckle Dew looking pretty comfortable. 3-0, I believe it was, and just looks really hard regardless. Um, Knuckle Dew definitely has made a lot of changes to his Mika since then. Yeah. And of course, Flash has made a lot of changes to his gameplay as well. Of course, noting the lack of, you know, defensive options on jumping. So I feel like that might be a problem versus a Mika. Yeah, <laughs> uh, you know, the thing about Knuckle Dew is that's, that's the strength of having a couple characters, right? So Guile. This Mika character is so fast uh, compared to Guile, right? And so, like, when you're playing Guile, you're going to get walked down by, uh, you know, the Vega walk speed, and you're just yes. going to get overwhelmed pretty quickly by that just grounded approach. So, yeah, why not go to one of your other characters, Mika, who can just get in there and maul? And I, I feel like the changes that would need to be made for Flash to excel have already been made in his gameplay over time. I feel like he definitely has a better chance this time around, but Knuckle Dew is leveled up just as well, so I just feel like we're in for a great match. I mean, we still have a lot of great matches remaining, but that's the next match, of course, that we have coming up for you guys. All right, and right before we head to that, we're going to have a little video for you guys to check out, grab some food, come back, and hit this sick match that we're going to have for you here at the Red Bull Battlegrounds.
so glad you've joined us for the second annual PlayStation Experience. Guys, how awesome is it that we're here for two straight days of nothing but video games? I'm from Argentina, Buenos Aires. I'm from Oklahoma City. I'm from a small town in Missouri, so it's a little overwhelming, but at the same time, it's super fun. PlayStation VR will be the home of the best experiences and games in VR when it launches. It's been an incredible ride, and we could not have achieved this success were it not for all of you. You are gamers at heart, you love the game, you love PlayStation, and we're so happy and humbled that you're part of our family worldwide. PlayStation. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. We are here at the Red Bull Battleground. Stage Jam, joined by the always lovely Tasty Steve. The one and only irreplaceable Mr. Tasty Steve. We are joined back at the Red Bull Battlegrounds. We're running through these losers bracket matches here in the yeah. top 16. We saw some crazy matches up in the winners part of it, and now we're down on the loser side of it. Um, elimination is definitely a factor now. Um, of course, Ludwig already going home. Uh, Taguchi already going home. Um, we got a lot of matches coming up, even more so, and these are all elimination. Yeah, so we're going to take a look at that bracket. There's Knuckle, Dew, Flash. <coughs> we were talking about that match before we uh, took that little lovely break to check out the video. It's going to be Knuckle, Dew, Flash. On the other loser's bracket match will be Ray Ray versus Alucard. Uh, these guys are fighting to stay alive. As you can see, they're still waiting for their opponents. Those will be the winner side matches we're going to have for you guys after we run through the losers. So, yeah, it's, it's, it's been a crazy tournament so far, you know, especially you got to think RB Takauchi is such a crazy match to have in first round losers. Losers, nonetheless, like RB versus John Takauchi. And I mean, we got a great chance to see opportunities and how this matchup plays out, because as we said before, there's not a lot of experience that anybody has versus a Urian, considering he's a DLC character. Still a great match. And of course, we saw F Champ versus Ludwig, who match wise, it, it, it really went one side at least for champ after he figured out the pacing of that and of course Ludwig put up a fight but he did go home yeah. and of course now we have knuckle do versus flash and we we got to see a recap of what happened when they played you know a few years ago a year or two ago earlier this year earlier <laughs> this year yeah and we'll get to see the winners bracket matches in a second we're going to take a peek at those for you guys let you guys know what the matches are going to be coming up we have all our quarters matches those are matches for top eight so justin wong versus samurai punk versus chris Tatarian. Tokido, Ricky Ortiz, and Julio Fuentes, K. Brad. All those matches are top eight qualifying matches uh, in the top 16. So, you know, all those matches are going to be really close to some really cool matchups that we're going to get to see in just a little bit. So, yeah, that's that's what we're looking forward to, right? That's the winner side, and we'll see who drops into losers and is fighting for that that spot. And as a reminder, we showed you earlier, what are the consequences if this person wins or that person wins and all that kind of stuff. Uh, I'm sure that'll be up again later for you guys uh, to look at and uh, see who is where and qualifying for the Capcom Cup. As we are near the end of the year, there's so many rules and regulations to yes. see who makes it in here, who makes it in here, like what's that going to be like. Uh, so yeah, that's what we're fighting for today. The winner of this event will be qualified for the Capcom Cup. So it looks like they're prepared on stage. Flash looking incredibly excited and ready. So enthusiastic about this match he's about to play. Did I just hear some do chants in the crowd? <laughs> Oh, I, I think did. so. I think so. Mika for Knuckle Dew. Are they are they button checking or are they going in? It's hard to tell sometimes, you know. All right, looks like it's our match. Slide early. Oh, nice punish. Yeah, not a, you know the thing is, I think that risk is okay because the punish is like so significant. Yeah, we're already even. And it's nice to check to see if they're awake. You know, I feel like that's one of the things reasons you do it. Yeah, if you looked at Flash before the match, you might not have been aware. <laughs> it, 
He might. He looked like he was mid slumber, selling that promo, telling you to buy that Vertigo chair, and now chance for oh. Flash. Like he's trying to make his way in. You know the preemptive little buffer there from Flash, sending the message, the reverse do. Look at that spacing. He's I just wonder if the, this tactic will work on Knuckle Do. <laughs> Oh, finds the hit, and he has trigger available. What's going to happen? Set What's up. the mix-up? In oh. the front. Yeah, and that's going to be stun. And we'll oh. see if he pays him back. Yep, we got some good old-fashioned thuggery for you guys to take a peek at. Meter build. And Knuckle do with the first round. Nice. Going to end that first round with right at two bars for EX. And CA completely available for Flash at this point. Ooh, oh, a little, nice. little intercept on the drop kick there. Nice confirm. Yeah, I got that walk on us. The strength of that walk speed. Big stunner for Knuckle Dude. He gets pressure here. Gets that V reversal. Oh, I see. Dude just walking around in that range, threatening. Yeah, and you see Flash just comfortable with getting out of range of Armika. Oh, nice punish right there. Gets that EX rolling Crystal Flash. Oh, nice punish. No confirm, though. Yeah, it doesn't cancel in anything. Dude, really? Yeah, so fast as Vega. He just gets to walk out of a lot of those command throws. Yeah, Vega definitely does have the opportunity to get out of a lot of the, the frame traps that Mika has available just by holding back because of that walk speed. Yeah, like she wants to do low short command throw. Uh, okay. Oh, wow. Just goes in, nice finds confirm. the hit, and that is that. Round for Flash. All right. Pretty convincing. He just kind of spent the whole round, you know, forcing Dew to move forward. Dew runs into a lot of buttons and damage on the way, and that's what that's going to look like. He's also going with this flawless approach. Okay. Big chance. This could be the round for Dew. It's the peach. And that mix up there, yeah, you saw Flash get hit by the strong. Is it command throw? Is it strike? And you just have to guess what it's going to be. Not going to do the spacing on that to get in for offense. Puts himself in the corner, actually. Oh, oh okay, yeah. That's how he got out. Gets the EX. Oh, I, I like the confidence that Flash oh, is showing us right now. No, oh, we could have just gone for rock yeah, clap. Just rock clap would have been the better solution. But now Knuckle Dude forcing the issue oh. again. No punish. And that's the scariest it. part. One of the scariest parts about fighting Mika is after you hit that button, it makes you unsure when to punish in some instances. Oh, oh the jump back. No. Oh, oh wow. Flash. This is a dangerous situation. Go. Oh, the wow, reversal. that was so good. Still finds the hit, and Ethan's going to do it right now. The double low short. Knuckle Dude finds it. Flash, you know, maybe hitting a button, maybe jumping or trying to escape, and he gets clipped for it. Knuckle Dude goes up in the first game. I think it's crazy how effective, like, walk up, crouching short with anybody is oh, yeah. when life is low. I think it's just... <laughs> there's, like, this intense mental battle between trying to block the overhead, throw attack, all these different options suddenly. Crouching short. You hear that lovely pants animation as he crouches <laughs> up and down? The flapping cape, maybe, is what it is. I'm not sure. Looking like Doctor Strange kind of in this outfit. Right. <laughs> oh, nice. Yeah, there's a confirm for Flash. I like him just walking out of there. You do not want to put yourself in a situation for no reason. Oh, gets that brimstone into the corner. Unfortunately, backing up definitely puts you in this situation. Nice wall jump. First time we've seen that use. And there's the EX giant swing. Get back over there. Uh. Oh, anti -air. nice anti-air right there. Body splat. Jump in again with the fierce. And you just see Flash content with just getting out of there. And now we're on the other side of the stage. Oh, nice confirm. Is that belly flop again? Oh, the dash is one, two, short. Can you imagine? He just did that extra dash command throw. I mean, he would have got him. And that would have been it. would have got him. It would have been the start. But now, round for Flash. Who's played the slow and steady pace. Uh, has done more down motions than any other. Maybe back also. Look at him trying to get in the range. Nice. Yeah, great punish. Yeah, thought Flash was going to jump right there. Oh, jumps up. Nice editor. air. Finds a hit. No confirm in the clap. And here comes the pressure from Knuckle Dude. Big neutral jump. And yeah, try to guess on the way out. Flash got clipped. This could be big. The command throw. Oh, but he was committed to wall jump already, so no punish. Look at the chase down. Dude is really trying to force right now. Getting a little impatient. But if he's not going to eat damage, why not go in? Oh, out of the air. No confirm from Dew. Needs to be really careful right now. Yeah, Dew ran into that now. Set up from Flash available. 
Oh, finds the hit again. What's going to happen this One time? more for the match. Oh, she's coming. Oh, wow. What a good choice right there. Just deciding to block, letting Nadeshko do all the work, which what she does anyway. Now do. Oh, God. Yeah, got through the throw. This is huge. Corner carry now. Flash has got a guess. Challenge. Nice button. Yeah, one of the few times he's gone to that button there instead of you know, trying to get out. Oh. oh, look for the read. Yeah, he's really looking for Flash to jump away from command throw is what he's expecting. Belly flop catches late button. Brimstone again, mid-screen positioning. Another Brimstone twice. Three times? How many, Steve? Four oh. times? If he does EX wingless. Oh! Big chance now for Flash. Damage output and he has corner. Has trigger available. Nice crouching fierce right there. No claw. 59 seconds left on the clock. Nice dash up throw. Back dash. Waiting the dash go. What's gonna there she is. Oh, nice oh. button right there on the jump over. 48 seconds left on the clock. Man, this patience from Flash is so good right now. Just waiting. Oh, nice confirm. Oh, that was a big rest from Dew. I wonder what that was about. The rose nice. too. Nice. Yeah. And basically just threw that match away. Got a little impatient, a little frustrated. Looking, Kind of looking down, maybe an input error. Got to wonder if you try to walk up and hit a button and you got like the quarter circle motion or something. I don't know. It's been a, quite a few of those. Then you can see Flash saying out loud. A nice <laughs> mumble under his breath. <laughs> walking back, Mika, <laughs> command throw. Oh, nice punish right there. Finds the Irish whip in the corner. What's the mix up? The blocks for Flash. Oh, oh just on the swing. command throw. I was thinking, you know, he's blocking a lot. Command throw coming. See, Knuckle yep. Dew backing up to space that crouching fierce over and over. One more for stun. There it is. And he got that crouch animation on that throw. That's really indicative. Left, right? Oh, yeah. nice block still safe. Another wingless. This, he tried to get out of the corner with it, but Flash is ready for the punish. Body split again. Crosses up a lot of people. Ooh. Oh, interrupt. Nice. Stuff on the drop kick right there. Oh, walk up counter hit. No confirm, and you just see him committing to it. Good blocks. Flashback into this game. Oh, the back dash and the punish from Dew. One more. Ah, two shorts. Yeah. Just, you know, you try to pull back or something, right, to walk away or jump, and you just get clipped. That sucks because he was definitely back in the round right there. Yeah, he had all those hits. Good whip punish. Oh, nice confirm. And just backs up. Doesn't go his way, just backs up. Get out of that range of danger. Still finds that big jump in. That could have been a lot worse. Flash, of course, hits Bud Zone, wake up, gets brimstone. Oh, nice. what an air throw. That reaction. Oh, okay. Can. Just finds a different approach. And Uncle Dude's like, all right, well, that doesn't work. How is Flash not hitting buttons? Like, I don't understand. Such incredible patience. He's just, yeah, he's willing to play back a lot of this, and that's what he has to do. If you get in footsie range and you eat a clap, it's it's really not worth trying to use your buttons a lot of the times. And walk to the other side of the screen, and you see Flash walking for a nice button check right there. Oh, no anti air. Oh! He goes under. Crouching. And once again, catch. Oh, and speaking of crouching. Oh, just, just waited. waited. Gets the back throw, and now you have the entire screen behind you. Of course, he's going to go the other way. Uh-oh. Curtical R, and that wow. is going to do it. You see, Knuckle do really just force, force, force forward, and just suddenly get hit by one normal into that V trigger, and that's going to do it. Oh, man. Yeah, Knuckle do really just forced the issue. And <laughs> <laughs> Flash, not asleep at the wheel, just does not know what to do right now. <laughs> that was really hard, though. Knuckle Dude was like you said before, he's pushing so much to make Flash react to something. And finding those hits does get difficult, but all he needs to do is find the hit. Oh, not a punish. Yeah, he tried to get in there to punish that with command throw. See, Knuckle Dude constantly forcing offense from Flash. And he walked himself into the corner early. Flash definitely not out of this yet. The way he's been playing, finding great situations, it just seems like Knuckle Dude gets that one instance, which is all Mika needs, and he's back in. Again. Forcing that 50-50. Anytime Mika does standing jab, uh, you got to guess between standing medium punch or command throw. And, you know, if you hold up, you get clipped. Brimstone. Oh, crouching short confirms the standing jab. EX Peach. And here comes the pressure again from Knuckle oh. Brimstone going to be stunned. 
And that is that. Did not spend any meter or anything. I like Knuckle Doo's frame kill with the uh, down, mm -hmm. down, down, down. Mm -hmm. Perfectly timed setup from Knuckle Doo. <laughs> oh, oh, wow. My. Dash up Brimstone. Did the twirly Brimstone. Gets the counter hit. Reset. Wake, Wake up, button. up jab. Dude, spacing on that was excellent. Oh, cross your anyway. beacon. Another oh. hit. This should be a stun if he spends meter. It is. And left, right. Oh, that man, that's is gonna that. be it. And Flash goes home, going down to Knuckle Dude. That just seemed really hard. I mean, I feel like he played a lot better than he, they showed us on that last set that he played. Right. Um, I, I mean, the idea is not bad to play slow, right? It's just like Mika's damage output when she hits you once. And she has so many ways to approach between jump, drop kick, crouching fierce, you know, all the different buttons. It's so tough. Here's that final situation you guys just saw a minute ago. That EX for the stun. This little switch right there. And then this is the guess, right? What side is she going to end up on? It looks like, you know, other side front. So tough to see that. It, it's really crazy to me that, like we said before, Knuckle Doo had so much control a lot of the time, but Flash made great strides in coming back. Yep. Um, I'm surprised that he actually went to pressing buttons from not pressing buttons. Because yeah. there were so many situations that Knuckle Doo was trying to press. He was like, I know you want to hit a button. I know you want to hit a button right here in the middle of this middle punch. And he's like, no. And then later on, that's when Flash started hitting buttons, and yeah. that's what got him opened up at the because, end. Because, you know, you can only block so long. Like you, have, yeah. you, feel like you have to do something to Mika, or she's just going to steamroll you. So, you know, if you don't hit any buttons, you're just going to be like, all right, well, there's five command levels in a row that one round, right? Where it was just like, oh, man. That was really tough. It definitely adds up. It definitely gets to the point. It, it gets frustrating because you're, you're asking yourself, when is it my turn versus this character? And, and Mika, definitely an overwhelming character in a lot of situations. We saw all those corner situations where Flash was just like, well, I'm not going to hit any buttons. Right. And Knuckle Doo had like five chances to try and mix him up with Command Throw in some instances, and he still didn't do it. But of course, we saw like a few, you know, brimstones in there. Yeah. And you just see it kind of, you know, go to the place where Knuckle Doo wanted it to be. Exactly. And I want all the people at home, at home to be in a place where they feel comfortable checking out the HyperX headsets, which is, of course, while they sit there in their Capcom Pro Tour shirts, in their Vertigear chairs, uh, signing up for the PlayStation experience, hitting this HyperX headset link over at hyperx.gg slash Capcom, you know, just handling all their business at home. You got that extra hour from the daylight savings. So that's what you're going to be doing today with it. Of course, mm -hmm. checking out the HyperX headset. And it looks like we have some more matches coming up for you guys. Next one should be Ray Ray versus Alucard. Oh, wow. This is going to be uh, nice. And these guys operate on the same coast, so I'm interested to see how this matchup goes. Whoa, whoa, whoa. What's happening here? Oh, wow. Rashid with the dab? All right. Okay. Lovely cosplayers here. Red Bull Battlegrounds. Giving you guys a yeah. great experience. Have an awesome art gallery. You guys want to check out more stuff. And like we said before, PG Panda Global Ray Ray versus F3 Alucard. I want to see how this match goes. Like I said, these guys operate on the same coast. They definitely have played before, but I want to see in a tournament setting so vital like this at Red Bull Battlegrounds, who's going to take the W? All right, so it's going to be Ray Ray versus Alucard, as you mentioned. And it's going to be interesting to see if Barrow can really get in there and make this happen. Media timing now. Yes, the dash up. Oh, crush counter. Yeah, big round already for Alucard. One more for stun. And that's that. Should be the round. And this is the kind of round that Barrow can have, right? It's really one of those situations where, you know, a couple of wrong situations, a couple Ugh. of wrong guesses, and that's that. Just punch right into that shop. Yeah, that's 100% true. Barrow is definitely like a powerhouse. Him finding a hit is definitely not something you want to happen. You see that that light kick into the EX legs from Mary? That'll be a punish on the dash straight. Ooh, nice. Oh, nice. Same was... side, no confirm. Oh, that is a low, and it's fast. Oh, what oh wow, just too early on that jump button. Yeah, not a punish from Alucard or Ray Ray in that situation. Yeah, gave Ray Ray an extra chance right there. Coming from that dominant first round, finds another hit, EX dash punch. This is the issue, right? Weak defense from Balrog. It's really tough for him to deal with a situation like that. Open up low, one more for stun. Here comes Ray Ray. Wake up oh. buttons. He's gonna get 50-50 here. Instead he wants corner carry and damage. Dashes all the way up, still has that trigger active. Both, both players. See those jabs from Ray Ray trying to intercept them. maybe a dash punch coming in. Ray Ray really no close. Has critical art now. No anti here, just like Sage Jump said. <gasps> no, he's gonna be able to jump back oh, on it. Oh, hit a button anyway. critical oh, oh, where was it? Where was the critical art from Alucard? The punch. 
I don't know what happened. I feel like that was a dropped input. There was a ton of spaghetti everywhere. Oh, nice jump in. Resets in the throw. Oh, the chase down from Alucard, but backdash on wake up from Ray Ray. Oh, crush counter. No confirm. Nice punish right there. And wake up buttons from Ray Ray works out. Alucard didn't have a real meaty. Oh. Nice activation. Gets that crouching medium punch confirmed. Ah, uh, the little dash up check. Overhead. Overhead. And Pops that's trigger. Bad. First match. Oh, spaghetti. Noodles. Close. Yeah, very <laughs> close. That's what the last round looked like. Uh, just a couple of weird drops from both of them. But yeah, I like that how card just went into that overhead V trigger cancel. Uh, he did it out of range where, like, that was for sure meaty. So yeah, it was really good of him to just be ready for that situation. I like that. I like this pick in this matchup. He's really trying to bulldoze Chun Li. Ugh. Oh yeah, overhead gets interrupted. I like that. I, I like the fact that Ray Ray is now trying to react to um, the V skill from Balrog. We saw that help out in a lot of matches versus Alucard early. Nice throw. Cool. Ah, uh, air legs, okay. Uh-oh, there's that activation on trigger again. We saw overhead huge, trade. Ooh, huge damage becomes gets on the table for Balrog. Is that offensive series you expect from Chun Li? Out of V trigger is Alucard. Ah, oh, critical arts available and spent. There you go, burn it. Yeah, you build meter so quickly in this game. Why not just spend that critical art, move on to the next round, make sure to take that W. You don't want to let Balrog, you know, get that one hit with all that meter. On top of that, you keep the momentum going into that next round. So it's really good. You spend it all. Gives you something to look forward to. And like you said, get that meter back. You get it really fast anyway. Oh, once again, nice reaction right there to that B skill. A lot more buttons the action here from Ray Ray. Oh, gets that crush counter sweep. Oh, look for the, the safe jump, but just mistimed or misspaced. Oh. Oh. The gloves. Oh, the gloves. Yo, half a stun bar works up so quick. Oh, oh, my. One more. Get oh. away. Oh, there it is. And yeah. No reaction to the V skill again. And you see Alucard get a little meter. Ugh. And that's going to do it. Yeah, didn't have to spend any resources for himself, right? He's going into the last round full critical art. So reactionary uh, CA to anything that Chun Li sticks out there. And you see that medium kick buffered into uh, dash punch in case Chun hits a big button. Oh, nice trade on the anti here. Alucard takes the advantage, though. Tries to punish. Ooh, yeah, there's that dash punch. So much damage. And oh, counter hit. Ooh, wow, nice setup right there. Tries to go for the throw after V-Skill, really working on stun. Ooh, Nothing. Stun bar goes down. Nice activation here from Ray Ray. Trying to make something happen right now. 70 seconds left on the clock. Nice anti-air. Oh, oh, the late tech from Ray, and that'll do it. Second game, two games straight for Alucard so far. Seems really comfortable in this matchup. Yeah, really confident at all the ranges against Chun Li, uh, and you know he doesn't really let her start her offense that consistently, and in the neutral looks fine as well. Is that stand medium kick again from Alucard? That's just buffered. Anytime Chun Li hits like a fierce, and that button is there, it's gonna be buffered in a dash punch. Nice sweep just to stop that approach from Chun Li. Oh, oh what? what? All right, you know what? <laughs> calm down, calm down. Combo fiends here somewhere. Find him. Oh. Approach, yeah, EX Fireball. Great answer here and stays in the front. A little whiff jab into the throw. Oh, nice buttons there. An awareness spot. What a trade. Alucard tries to get a nice confirm. Damage is already done, though. Nice confirm into the trigger from Ray Ray. Let's see if he can get something. Finds a hit. Got that him. should be the round. Ray Ray not out of this yet. See if oh, he can get a round up there. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, that was a great round for himself, Alucard. Uh, you know, he's looked good so far, so it's whether Ray Ray can keep this up or not. That buffer. Medium kick, so good for intercepting limbs. Yeah, you see it again. It's crazy because the limb is so close to his body, but he's confirming. Yeah, really a lot of swinging from Alucard, and he's running into things from Ray Ray. Ray Ray really close to stun right now. Nice whiff punish. It's the anti air. Oh, whip punish. Get punched. Stun. Nice activation. This is definitely going to be stun. Should be the game. There it is. And Ray Ray is going to take it really convincing. It seems like Alucard got maybe a little too comfortable. Started 
trying to press a bit too hard, and Ray Ray was intercepting well. See now if he can keep that up, though. That's important. That's an important game for him to establish. All right, throws him thumbs up. Let's see how this. It's it's. I like the the adjustments that Ray Ray is making. Um, he's definitely trying to react to the V skill from Balrog. It's not helping out too much, but I feel like the damage that's potentially going to happen in between those trades, it's too high to test. I feel like you shouldn't test that because it's just scary. Still Balrog for Alucard. And yeah, it's really dangerous. If Ray Ray lets anything go, right? Any little situation where Balrog can slip past the normals and uh, fireballs he's sticking out, that's huge damage output. Mm -hmm. And it's... It's just like any little mistake can cost you so much in this game, especially against a character like Balrog. All right, potential last match here for Alucard, if he can take it. Ray Ray not done yet, not going quietly, as one might say. That little low medium punch from Balrog. One of his best counter pokes, you can buffer that in a dash punch. So if they run into it, you get it. Oh, nice kiss to sweep to get that knockdown, starting that pressure early. Nice V skill to get through the fireball. Oh, nice. Tries to tick. Just saying, yeah, you see, oh, yeah, I gotta be a punish. Just saying, air legs float again from Ray Ray. Try to get past that punish, yeah. Not enough, but something. Nice throw. I love this pace. Oh, big fierce, yeah, and it, wow. okay, ants here. Gets it to throw again. Yeah, Ray pressure Ray. pressure from Ray Ray has been pretty simple so far, but good. Yeah, floating on the air legs a little high that time. Now big dunk nice fest. Hit. Yeah, goes right into critical art. You Ooh. don't want to mess around with any fancy juggles, spinning EX and stuff like that. Go right into the damage. And now match point for Alucard over Ray Ray. In this uh, first round loser's match of the top 16. Tries the V skill through the fireball. A little close to it. I right, kind of lingered out there for a while. No anti air. Oh, no oh, cancel. Oh, oh. Yeah, I gotta wonder where Ray Ray's EX legs were. Oh. Drops the air legs. Still managed to get in safely. Here See, Alucard. Alucard. Yeah, headed in, trying to counter poke a lot of these Chun Li normals. I like this. Ray Ray, stay back. There you go. Finds the hit with the air legs. No confirmed. Drops the combo. Oh. And trading. Yeah, a little check, but immediate bird. We'll see what the, the mix-up is. Okay, buttons. All right, this is going to hurt. Not dead. Overhead trade. Oh. He's going to combo, and that is that the dunkage that Alucard was looking for. Totally ready. As soon as there was the trade, he immediately knew EX was queued up and ready to go. And that's the kind of damage output you can expect from Balrog in those trade situations where things get funky. Uh, Alucard, great awareness. So, yeah, let's check that out again. You'll see it. So he tried this earlier in the set. He got that trade. Uh, dash or overhead and didn't get the dash point this, this, that time, but this time he was ready for it. You can see the knockdown situation. There's the check on Wake Up from Alucard. Such crazy awareness that, like, to go right back into overhead it. trade EX. Uh, wow. So much hit stun on that that he got the immediate follow up. You can see Chun Li reeling from it. <laughs> was totally in, in like plus five million hundred thousand and just like went in and I, I feel like that's a pretty unique situation i mean there's a lot of characters like chun li who confirm off those trades i mean yeah. if you're in the air you fall you hit the ground but barrock seems to do so much damage on the trade like if he hits you in the air and you confirm we've seen we saw him do it earlier and he confirmed right into critical war and it took off so much damage you know steve i can confirm that hyperx still has inventory available over <laughs> at their website right now and if you'd like to pick up any of their lovely products you can do so over at hyperx.gg slash capcom cloud stingers brand new check that thing out swivel the mute microphone as we mentioned you get hit by that overhead and you want to scream out loud but you don't want your opponent to hear you swivel that mic up it'll automatically mute itself so they can't hear your screams of frustration as they take all your fight money online of course that is a big struggle but yeah hyperx headset check them out for sure and uh, more of this top 16 bracket coming at you guys in just a minute you can see the winners matches this is what we're going to be jumping into soon justin wong number one seed against xsk samurai Punk versus Chris Tatarian. I'm really excited to see that match, actually. And then, of course, we have Tokido versus Ricky Ortiz. And these are all the qualifying matches mm -hmm. for top eight, as we mentioned. We're still in this top 16. You can see the trophy there. Hadouken. That's a sick trophy. With yeah. the Seattle. That's sick. Yeah, it's a 
quite a lovely trophy. Whoever came up with that and created it, good work. See Justin with that Twitter gaming hoodie. Gotta, I'm going to talk to somebody over Twitter games here. I know, right? I want to get one of these cool hoodies. All right. This is three out of five. Winner's side, of course. Yeah, and Samurai with the Samurai Ryu on the right. Justin Wong Looking for this alternate outfit with Karen as well. And this is to see who advances to top four. Top eight? Top yeah, eight. winner's oh, top just. eight, yeah. Oh, V-Skill caught the fireball. And then one thing about Samurai we mentioned in that John Takeuchi match, right, is the defense, the patience. Oh, yeah. Going to be important in a match like Karen, right? Oh, intercept. That is a hugely important button against Karen is that roundhouse to intercept a lot of her forward movements. And you can see the chase down. Samurai really crowding Justin, trying to force the issue, but stays patient despite having that stun gauge. Ooh. Crushing keeps it up. Corner positioning. Throw. I know that. And look for throw, but yeah, didn't take the bait. Wow, that little backup got just right out of range of a Samurai sweep right there. A little check after from Samurai with the light kick. You can see full V gauge for him. You see Justin just back off. Yeah, gives him the space and says, all right. Yeah, let that trigger run out. You don't have to overexert yourself. Yeah, nothing out of that V trigger for Samurai. I feel like a lot of people forget that. that they only have so much time where they have to deal with a V-Trigger. Huge just, jump. Oh, nice. Oh, he missed the combo, whatever he was trying. Now full gauge for Justin. Whoa, that was it. That low oh, medium kick wow. was it, but he didn't cancel in anything, and Samurai gets a little buffer instead. And Justin seems so controlled for most of that round. The Samurai still brings it out. First round, first game. XSK Samurai. Oh, over here. See that little stand? That stand light kick from Samurai hugely... Hugely uh, a factor so far. You just you just stick it out, and buffer it into Tatsu or Fireball. Oh, it's nice. really strong. Yeah. Tries to find something with that neutral jump. Justin gets the throw. Oh, no whip punish from Samurai and the Visco. I feel so much inclined to watch the life bars now. I want to see where the turnaround happens. Yeah, Samurai. He just gets a little bit of damage here and there. Grounded and then keeps the throw. Look at the life lead Justin has right now. Nice standing. Medium kick goes right into that roundhouse crush counter. V skill. Oh, Huge. jumps out. And yeah, and Samurai has offense now. Throw. Gets the throw. And this is what I'm talking about. The jump out from Justin. Yeah, you see that. You don't want to deal with the mix up. Just hold up on wake up to get away. It's becoming a really common idea now. It beats throw. It beats uh, you know throws. It beats you know backing off to try to throw bait. So many options. Oh, Samurai nice with the counter. That's V gauge on deck for Samurai as well. You got to know that he's looking for it. 25 seconds left on the clock, and, and just Samurai just standing right there. He's so patient. It's very rare that a, a player has the patience to match Justin Wong. Exactly. 15 seconds left on the clock, and you see Justin just going right back to medium kick. Oh, oh he tries to go for the parry. parry. Try to count Justin to have a similar rhythm, but he just didn't hit the button at the same time. And, you know, Justin, uh, good against Ryu throughout the tour. The only one that's given him issues, really, is Aikido, right? Uh, and you can see why. It's the patience. He doesn't get overzealous about trying to approach on fireballs or anything. He's just, he's just ready to play this ground game and hang out. Oh, trade. And look where Justin stands on screen, right? Right outside range where Ryu's normals are really a threat and where he can still anti-air. And then suddenly dashes into approach. There's the buffer from Samurai, though. Nice, get the EX Tatsu. You see Justin trying to find his way in now. Look at all that gray life adding up on the side. There's the V reversal. Oh, yeah. I don't know what that was about from Justin, but the jump light kick, the answer to all things anti-air. Nope. There's the overhead again. Approaching with V-Skill. You can see how much V-Gage Justin has already. I can't believe Samurai's patience right now, especially like you said versus somebody like Justin Wong. Yeah, it's tough to remain patient even against a player like Justin. But Samurai's doing a good job of it so far. D-Gage is still available for Samurai. He can pop in a trigger. And these match time. It's almost 30 seconds left right now. Life pretty identical. Oh, yeah. Justin this is huge Wong damage. Hit. He's oh. going to take the critical R. And there it is. That should definitely be the first match. Uh, yeah. <laughs> that super always kills, dude. I, I always. saw people talking about it. It 100%. always kills. 
It's enough. So Samurai, despite the patience, Justin finds the hit that he needs on that big crush counter roundhouse. Throws him the thumbs up. Yeah, and this is a real grinder of a matchup. Uh, you know, it's it's really about pixels here and there off the life bar as they try to just get a little damage and wherever they can against each other. See Justin, a little bit more dashing, a little bit more approach. What he'll do is he walks out of your normal range and V skills, right? So you you want to counter poke at that range, and then that's where he walks back and V skills, you know, about that range right there, where suddenly like your normal is coming out, and he'll whiff punish with it preemptively. Gets that knockdown, gets that V trigger meter, and he's still good to go. Yeah, I mean you can see how much V gauge Justin has already, right? He's barely taken, you know, that much damage. He's already almost got V trigger. He's got it. Oh, crush counter. Nice push right here. Nice, staying on the same time. Wake up DP from Samurai. Finally took the risk. Justin trying to find a way back in right now. Samurai with a slight life lead. And you see he's not, he's in no rush. Wow, no whip punish from Samurai? I gotta wonder. I just thought the record was gonna hit him. So no more V for Justin, but full gauge for Samurai. Critical R and V-Trigger on deck. Still walking into these standing mediums from Karen. Trying to find a hit. Oh! Great, confirmed. Justin just built the meter at the end, too. And, and you know, Samurai, that one little forward movement. That one time, and Justin's totally ready. And if anybody can play the patient game... It's Justin Wong. Yeah, man. Even if you are so, so patient like Samurai is, eventually you got to move in. It's just tough because his normals... You know, he really can't contest Karen on the ground super... Forever, right? It's not. It's not going to be easy. So that's why Karen has, you know, the ability to kind of play slow against Ryu. Oh wow! Gets that crush counter. And full look, full, full V trigger already for Justin. Samurai has less life and just built V gauge. <laughs> Throw and close to stun is Samurai. Oh, oh baited. Yeah, yeah. It's a button right now, and this is definitely going to hurt. Not dead, but no. pretty close. Oh yeah, gotta be uppercut is what it was, you know, and he just got the uh, super instead, so cracks from Samurai, right? He, we saw him say so solid in that first game, but slowly looking like Justin is grinding him down and forcing these mistakes out of him. Yeah, Justin seems so much more comfortable in this matchup, and he knows, I think it makes him comfortable that Samurai's willing to wait as well. Yeah, and you know, everybody knows Justin, you know, beat Daigo at Evo, right, in the same kind of matchup, and it's a similar fashion. It's this, this slow pace that he really is, excels at more than almost anybody. Nice, gets that V skill. Uses that to get pressure in the corner. So much V oh, gauge for nice. Justin already. Still trying to find this. It gets the jump in. It's so rare that Justin jumps forward too, and when mm -hmm. he does, he's just right. No anti air. Gets the jump in. Nice combo to DP. I don't wonder if Samurai might approach from the air a bit more now. No counter hit confirmed. That could have been the sweep. And Samurai just seems like he having such a hard time. Making Justin oh, make a him. mistake. Yeah, it's just, you know, Samurai, the patience, is, it's hard to do when you're getting out class right. on, the, on the ground, right? I mean, Justin has these huge range normals that you really cannot pick apart. And now, you know, it's stuff like that uppercut happens. Punish. Nice punish right there. And you see Samurai making an offensive push. We haven't seen much from him. Yeah, picking up the pace for sure. Oh, oh what nice. a buffer. Crouching strong right there. Goes right to the Tatsu. Justin now corner positioning though, full V gauge and critical art. Okay. I don't wonder when Samurai starts to hit his own buttons from this corner. Right. Just so content with not hitting any buttons. There's a fireball. And it's like Another he's not one? trying to fight his way out. How many of those overheads were there? Oh my. Oh, oh, come on. And you know all he needs is one low. Oh, oh like just like five. No challenge. I want him to overhead. Oh, oh. my. Oh, he parried. He tried to parry it. Oh, the oh, low. And, and that is that. It. The one time he goes low. <laughs> and Justin Wong over XSK Samurai. Just imagine how, how annoying that must be to be Samurai saying, I know I can wait. And Justin waits longer. <laughs> the turtle. He is like the fighting game manifestation of true turtle patience. Like, he plays so slow. Mm-hmm. And so steady, and eventually your patience will run out, no matter how, no matter who you are. It's very, very, very difficult to outweigh Justin, uh, especially when he hits you with about seven overheads. 
and then empty jump low. Like, who do you think you are? How does he sleep at night? I don't know, man. Apparently. I feel like probably way too comfortably <laughs> is the answer. He, he snuggles up. Oh, I hit him with seven overheads. It was so sick. He has no a dream. <laughs> he wakes up from his dream, the nightmare where all the overheads were blocked. <laughs> man, what a guy that Justin Wong is. So he moves on to the top eight winners. Uh, so we're going to see, you know, how everybody else is. We have all the top 16 winners matches coming up right now. Uh, so, you know, as you guys are at home and you think to yourself, how many overheads did he actually hit him with? Well, good thing you're watching on Twitch.tv, which stores all the broadcasts of these lovely Capcom Fighters matches. So you can just go to the archive and check it out and count for yourself manually. Uh, of course, you know, Twitch.tv, they handle everything. The boys in purple do some, such a lovely job over there, providing such an amazing streaming service and platform for us to watch video games and be happy about it. I mean, half the work is already done. You're watching on Twitch. Let's just say you missed something. You had to run and do something else. Check those VODs. Make sure you guys check the archives. And then, you know, just be up to date.